echoing high five between FSR and Albin Ocean. I think with Chris Melling's loss, we have our 10 names for Seven stage two left. starting tomorrow. Dave Melling Strack. will not be able to leapfrog Woodward, SVB or Albin Ocean. Nonetheless, every point is important as they carry over to stage two and from 10 players, they will then play to go down to six. And, you know, no gimmies anymore in that list of 10 players. Every yeah. point is important. So it will be hard fault. Yeah, sorry, Alex. I was just, I thought you'd finish. I was just going to say, I bet Woodward's been for a bit of food, a bit of clothes shopping today, thinking I'll go there tonight. I've got it all to do. And he's going to come here knowing that it's okay. Unbelievable. Kick and stick from Ruiz. Takes a jump cue. Nice distance between the cue ball and the five. My only worry, if I were jumping, would be that eight ball. The jump itself is very doable. Can't hit that cue ball too low. Side by Elban Ocean, the holder is guaranteed to place in stage two, but he, he wants to make a, a feel good transgression. Extension called lost his winning ways somewhat the past couple of days. Looking at the leaderboard, Alex, if I'd have asked you your top 10, I don't think you'd be far off, would you? You know, when you look at the players that are going to exit. Yeah. Um, Extension, please. Yeah, uh, right about close, uh, but, but, the, the order of these 10 names, that's very different from what I would have envisioned. Pelivanovic at the top. Two Americans dangling down below, plays nine and 10. Yeah, I mean, after the first stage, maybe you wouldn't quite pick it that way, but we're not shocked to see it that way. But obviously come to the next stage, things can start to change around a little bit because all 10 players are going to go again and play each other. In general, I feel that players who cruised through the opening stages of a tournament then fall back a little bit and the players that have a harder route, they shine in the latter stages of a tournament. Like often you see, I think, the player that does well in the opening rounds wins easy, big scores then gets defeated where someone that comes from the loser side in a double knockout format goes on to win the tournament so I would say if I look at the top 10 that a winner according to that concept the winner would come from place 6 to 10 but it means that tomorrow and Sunday one of those players really needs to step on the gas would be something for Albin to do it once again winner of two previous league events Straight enough on the five.
Just a stun shot, move that cue will over. Some five inches to the right would be fine. We all know Alvin's won a lot of big pool tournaments since nine balls come alive. And this is about the time where Alvin usually picks the game up a little bit like what you were just saying, Alex. Starts off a little slow, goes through the motions, misses a few balls, throws the cue down a little. <laughs> but now he, he, this is where he'll kick on. The next stage of the event, the business end. Of yeah, the event. He's, he's a star at that. The rope a dope tactic. 1 0, Ocean. Oh, and I uh, want to excuse myself for speaking early. I said the first 10 names are set, but it's not the case. Chris Melling standing at 11, even though he lost his match against Na Nayuki Oi, still has a chance. Yeah, he's obviously got to beat Khalid Al Gamdit later on. If he lost that match, then he is out because he would not be on six points. But if he gets to six points and Woodward loses all three, then it's going to go on a count back of Rax from Rax. On Rex, yeah. So Woodward would need to lose all three and with good numbers. Second rack. But it is in Sanchez Woodward's Sanchez hand. But he's not going to get all his own way tonight, Woodward. Because he plays Strickland, Pagalion, and the Yukioi. Three tough matches there. Nine balls close. Perfect cue ball control. FSR's trademark. Two long rails, then bump onto the lower side of the nine and hold the cue ball withdraw. Seems improbable that he could do that on purpose, but he does it time and time again. He's eyeing up something on that nine. Can have a go if he's able to control the cue ball. Attention, please. Play it as a shot to nothing. Shot. Beautiful. Francesco Sanchez Reese wins the second yeah. track. Also. Ocean visible in the corner, complementing the combination. Very difficult. It wasn't so much a shot to nothing, but he gets it done. It's not a jury sport. Sink to nine on a legal shot with the rack. That's what it's about. Yeah, he made that look easy. Did Ruiz. Nine wins from 13 for Francisco. Just the two games Red left. Break. One after One this. Have a look break. Yeah, that was a good break also. That's it. Kicked back up table, but with enough speed to come back down to center table with shape on a two. Side pocket is not a problem. He can float this in. Maybe even come across, play the three to the same pocket.
Is this straight enough to play with draw? Good break, a good result after the break is pivotal. Keeps the game easy, keeps you in rhythm, keeps you in stroke. I remember Ocean's final in the European Open against SPP was in the beginning of this break format where the players didn't have the consistency yet. They looked lost. Not now, not today, Ocean. A break and run to take the lead against FSR. He's in need of some running <coughs> on day five of this PLP. 2-1 in the last match of this afternoon session. Fourth rack. Francisco Sanchez for to break, trailing 2 1. This is the last match of the afternoon session on day five. Judgment Day here in Leicester. Table two has finished. So this is the last match out in the arena. FSR hitting this break even more perfect than the previous one. Look at the impact with the nine. Slam in the face and then that draw that sucks the cue ball back to center table. I'm not saying by any means that if another top player would have FSR's consistency on the break, that they would get his successes that he's had over the past 12 months. But it would make many a top player, any top 20 player in the world, a believer to be able to do so because so consistent. He'll track towards the six and nine coming out of the corner. And that's straight enough to drop below the five. Checking here if that seven goes to the corner. straight and 
And this has really, not this shot, but the shot on the six has been his bread and butter. Like medium distance shots, 30 degree Thanks. angle, under pressure, they get missed into the long rail. And he has made many, many, many of those under pressure. This exact shot is what you are talking about. How does he play this little soft stun or will he risk going forward to hit what? it a little bit more positive? He would like to stroke it. That's how he has made how he has made most of them. He's here choosing to let that cue ball go into the nine. Yeah, nicely done. You could see the way he was gearing up for the shot, couldn't you, before he was wiping the cue down in mm -hmm. his hand, and then he steps into the shot. That's his little pre-match routine. Very superstitious player, is Ruiz. Why? Because he wipes the cue? No, I uh, I filmed the what's in the bag with him a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. and he's got so much stuff in his in his cue case. He's like got key rings off people that he always leaves in. He's got <laughs> pictures. Oh, and... I'm gonna watch that. Yeah, it's incredible. And that's on your channel. Uh, I've not put it out there yet. It'll be out in less than a week. Oh, that's sneaky, sneaky little pitch. Can't wait. Francesco Sanchez Ruiz wins the wreck. Yeah, and this is why he's doing so well. He's got his own way of doing it, and you know, he's won so many big tournaments within the last 14 <laughs> months. All started at the Derby City Classic 2022, where he beat Filler in the final of the nine ball. Since then, he has been a man on a mission. It all started at our Moscone Cup after party when we were harassing David Alcady because he was proclaiming that FSR would become the next big big player yes he was actually and we was all saying no <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, like december listen every time i see david at event he just sort of looks at me and winks we, we've got this little thing <laughs> nine balls close the nine ball is there as he cheers <laughs> for a golden break <laughs> albion ocean was it the cue ball yeah the cue ball straight into the nine all right. Yeah, there was a time where you got good odds betting two or three golden breaks in the whole tournament. Not now. This is his before last match of the Austrian. Would like to get to nine wins. Little thick on the one. Now it's to the referee's discretion to tell a player if he's breaking on the uh, slow on the soft side they need to have an intent to break with speed I think this was borderline different ways to play this he can try and run it to the four or he can go three rails if he gets around the five going forward three rails then the six wouldn't be too much of a worry for me. It's unlikely to come around to five, hit the six and not have a shot on the three. Low on the cue ball, choosing to go into the four. Look how that worked out distance to the three yeah but the four bumped into position that's m that makes a stop shot on the four already good enough mm. it wiped its feet 
Yeah, but more than that, he's on the wrong side of the four now. Right? No, I think he's just okay. I think he can go forward, Alex, and just use the rail. Yeah, he's okay. And if you look where the six is, you can get a nice angle to get up for the seven, then the eight just lends itself for the nine, so this rack is as good as over. I think Shaw, Peglivanovic and FSR Ocean, these two matches are a prelude to what we can expect tomorrow on Sunday. Yeah, well said. It's well pointed out because we are going to lose the bottom six players after tonight's play. Top ten advance. And it's, you know, it's going to be the strongest top ten. Not just because they finished in the top ten, but maybe on paper as well. Yeah, and they're warmed up. They feel like this is their home table. Yeah, and how much pool have we played as well this week? So they're really warmed up. This is five days of action. And we wouldn't expect anything else than this two, these two big European players, Moscone Cup legends, world champions. This match is tied at three apiece. Both players making the head ball in the side pocket every break. I promise you, it's not as easy as they're making it look. Right on cue. Thank you, Albin, for that one. <laughs> yeah. Two ball down. It's not easy, though, is it, Alex? I know we... we, we are we ever going to get to the point where the one ball keeps disappearing? No, no, because day one and two, players were, were having trouble. It's, it's a fine balance. It's the thickness of the hit on the one, the speed and the amount of draw. Because you need to manipulate the one. The tangent line off of the second ball doesn't point towards the side pocket. You need to work it to make it work. Yeah, good pot there. He was fortunate that the cue ball didn't stay behind the seven, but not much Albie can do about that. He's just got to bear down and knock this in, and he cued it nicely. Well, like he jumped up a little bit upon impact. It's not something I've ever really seen him do. Usually stays very still. And even though these two players have qualified, this is still a big match for Albin. This is why he's giving it everything. Because he's on seven wins. This would put him up to eight. And he'd only have one more match to play tonight. There's actually there's actually four players, Alex, on 13 matches played. 
and seven points. Albin's one of them. Every match counts. Think of it as a poker tournament. Do you want to get to the final table with a small stack? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, I do too. <laughs> you know, metaphorically no, I know speaking. Just checking his angle here. Gotta go forward, but if he's just off straight, he may go off the back rail. Yeah, it's okay. Finds the back rail. That leaves a nice angle just to slide up past the nine. Yeah, under pressure. Two things important. Maintaining your finesse, speed control, and decision making. And both these assets, Alban Ocean, has them in abundance. I don't think he's the best ball striker. Not even close, actually. But he's just very cool. Very good speed. Yeah, what he does do is he plays this, you know, this equipment, you know, the, the TV table, the shiny new balls. He plays all this very good, doesn't he? He's a master in this arena. That's why he's won so much. The Maestro the from the Klagerford goes up 4-3. Another break and run. Start of Let's see. Leading for free, Francesco Sanchez Ruiz. It's not a it's not a button, and once you have it, you can press it every time. This break has been proven to hold up. I would say, out of every player here this week, though, he is the one man who makes the head ball more than anyone else. I'm convinced with that stat. Yes, and apart from the one ball finding a pocket, his cue ball control is second to none. His cue ball has hit the lower short rail the least. I think maybe in the whole tournament five times, if that. Top corner, playing with low to take the nine ball out of the equation. Actually, the risk of landing behind the nine. Yeah, and we talk about the break shot in pool, but it's not the be all and end all. He's still lost four matches, nine wins from 13 matches. Could be five, because Alvin will be breaking in the last if it gets there. It looks like it's gonna. This is a nice split. Yes, the typical walk around the table when he starts to feel good. Yeah, it's like a little hop, isn't it? I'm winning all the tournaments, all the trophies, all the cash. I'm going to bounce around the table. Come and get me. El Ferrari is his nickname. Also known as FSR. Well, he used to play a lot quicker. Didn't we all? Well, this would be a fitting end of today's play. Took a little wobble, wiped his feet, but it's fell in the pocket. So this nine ball for FSR. 
We're going to finish today's play with a one-rack shootout. Albion Ocean will be breaking to try and win a point. Latter years as a professional. Well, he's 44. Come on. Over, pal. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs to be hungry and believe. Good break. And I think if you're hungry enough, then you'll be a believer. <coughs> I think Albin's got to be looking at the bank shot here. I know he's obviously a great safety player, either or, but looks like it lends itself for a bank shot. Yeah. He doesn't miss many banks, and that is because he only plays them when he likes them. He'll tell you that he cannot bank, but he does bank good. Difficulty here is he needs to squeeze the two ball a little bit. And if he plays with draw, he, he risks going towards the four. So stun run through, perhaps. Yeah, stun run through made the bank more difficult. So a mistake, I think, that he made here, he tried to squeeze the two ball by using a lot of speed. But if you use a little bit of left left spin on the ball, on the cue ball, that puts check on the object ball, and then you don't have to slam it that much, because speed kills action in bank pool. You know, medium speed, trace of left spin would have done the job. He's been very fortunate not to leave Ruiz a pot for the match. Two rails, it would go along the back rail, but yeah, and if it doesn't go, as long as the cue ball tracks down table, he has the six, the seven, the eight to work for him. Needs to hit the two ball on the way out. Hit it on the way in and sells out. Yeah, that was a poor effort from Ruiz. He would like to get a little bit more action going there. The fact that he hit it pretty full, actually, coming off the side rail. Now, if he lands a little low on the four, for the four to the same pocket, You'll have a natural angle to go into the long rail left and then track towards the left side of the seven. He's pointing to a different spot on the on the rail. Stay low or is he coming high? Yeah, try to come out high. Made a little mistake here. So he tried to be high with a natural angle to go short rail long rail to the right and then cruise into his line for the five he's left himself a little straight extension, extension please can he play follow with right He's drawing straight back to the long rail, maybe with left to come closer to the five. Swings it all the way north. Lost his cue ball. He's lucky to not scratch. Now the pocket is open, top right, otherwise he wouldn't have gone there with the cue ball.
Makeable pot, but a big seven, I tell you. Shot. I like how he played that. I like it. Another roll, which would have been a phenomenal positional shot. Good effort. He's all in. Slice it. No extension left. Yes, back in play, back in play he is. Two big shots there from Albin Olshun. Little smile from Sanchez, he knows this one's done. Oh. Ish, <laughs> done. Wow, drop the shoulder there. Wow, two great shots by Albin, the cut on the five. And then the cut on the six, traveling um, some 12 meters in two shots. <laughs> That's it. What a classic to end with. Two buddies, two Moscone Cup buddies. Albin Ocean nicks it in the end. Five racks tough.